I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about simple uh, trigonometric uh, identities or equalities. Uh, and uh, today's uh, lecture is about law of science. Um, as the previous lecture, law of cosines, we are talking only about trigonometry of the triangles, actual trigonometry of the angles in the triangles. Um, it's not like general trigonometric identity for any angle. These are only about triangles. But, however, we don't put any restrictions on the triangles. So what is um, the law of science? Actually, it looks quite, I would say, mm, nicely and maybe unexpectedly. Actually, when I saw this particular identity, I was surprised how I don't know, beautiful it looks, if you wish. Here is what it is. Uh, let's say you have a triangle, ABC, sides lowercase a across the vertex a, lowercase b across b, and lowercase c against c, and angles alpha at the a, beta at b, and gamma at c. Now, here is the law of science, which again, in my personal view, looks really very cool. A divided by sinus alpha equals B divided by sine of um, beta equals A, oh, sorry, C divided by oh, oops, sine beta alpha. Alpha, beta, and sine of gamma. Again, okay. a divided by sine of a, a divided by sine of a, equals b divided by sine of b, b and sine of b, and c divided by sine of gamma. So it's always opposite angle. So that's the point. Okay, warning number one. Well. We have something in denominator. Maybe it's equal to zero. Well, no. You remember we are talking about triangles, and triangles have angles from zero to 180 degrees, zero to pi, not including zero and not including 180, obviously. And sine, as a function, equals to zero on sine x equals to 0 when x is equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, minus pi, etc. So it's pi k. So if my angle is between 0 and pi, not including uh, the endpoints, then sine is not equal to 0. So this is valid uh, for any triangle, no questions about that. Now let's talk about the proof. Uh, all right, the proof is actually very easy. So let me drop an altitude from B to AC to the point H. Now, what can I say about this BH? BH is a catheter in two right triangles, ABH and CBH. Well, they are right because this is the perpendicular. It's an altitude, right? So, in the right triangle, cachetus is equal to, if you remember, um, the uh, side of the, the hypotenuse, actually, uh, multiplied by uh, a sine or a cosine, depending on whether the cachetus is adjacent or uh, opposite to an angle. So, Let's consider ABH, BH is a catheter, alpha is an angle, and C, AB equals to C, is a hypotenuse. Now, let's call the lengths of this the letter H. So what can we say about H? H from ABH is equal to 
C times sine of alpha. Since H is an opposite um, catheter to an acute angle alpha, then it's hypotenuse times sine. Now, let's consider the triangle DCH. Same thing. H is opposite to gamma, so it's equal to hypotenuse, which is A, times sine of gamma. So, forget about H now. And let's rewrite this as we can divide by sine uh, alpha times uh, sine gamma. They are not equal to zero, so we can safely divide it. And what will be C sine alpha divided by sine alpha sine gamma equals A sine gamma divided by sine alpha sine gamma. And what do we have? C over sine gamma equals A over sine alpha. Sine alpha and sine gamma. Now, where is the B? Well, I mean, obviously, all you have to do is to draw another altitude. If you will draw an altitude to, let's say, where is my red? If this is H, same thing. Consider triangle AHC now. AH is opposite to gamma. This is hypotenuse, B. So B, B times sine gamma. That's what H is. Now, from AHB triangle, the angle on the top is beta. Hypotenuse is C, so it's equal to C times uh, sine of beta. Again, forget about this. Divide by sine gamma times sine beta, and, and what we will have? B over sine beta equals C over sine gamma. Okay? If we divide this by sine gamma times sine beta, sine gamma would be reduced in this case, so I will have only sine beta, and sine beta would be reduced here, and I will have only sine gamma. Now, these two actually is basically what this is written. Right? Because this is C over sine gamma, and this is C over sine gamma. So I can just continue the whole thing. Have we proven this particular theorem really rigorously? <laughs> well, not exactly. Because, again, we have to consider different cases when the... Um, base of the altitude H falls not in between these points B and C and be kind of dependent on this, right? So let's just think about what will be in case uh, we have an obtuse angle. All right, so let's say we have this particular triangle. A B, C, A, B, uh, sorry, this is C, and this is B, and this is alpha, and this is beta, and this is gamma, and our altitude comes outside. Well, let's do exactly the same. We still have BHA, the right triangle, and BHC, the right triangle. Okay, from the triangle BHC, BHC, 
H is equal to hypotenuse A times gamma is an opposite angle to the BH, so it's sine of gamma. Now, from the triangle BHA, H is equal to C hypotenuse times sine of, oops, this is not alpha. This is pi minus alpha. So it slightly changes the, the, the proof. Because now what we have to really do, and um, obviously I have to analyze what this is all about. Um, now, it, it's simple, basically. Again, consider unit circle. Sine is ordinate. So if this is alpha, then this is uh, pi minus alpha. But ordinates are obviously the same. We were, uh, we have proved many times actually that sine of pi minus alpha is equal to sine of alpha. So using the trigonometric properties of a sine, I can say that this is equal to c sine of alpha, which is exactly the same as before when the triangle did not have this obtuse angle. So all I'm saying is that formula remains absolutely the same. A sine gamma equals C sine alpha. And again, divided, dividing this by sine alpha times sine gamma, we will have A over sine alpha equals to C sine over sine gamma. So no matter where, the, where this H actually falls, it falls on this side or on that side, we will have either one of these angles, alpha, beta, gamma, or one of these angles, pi minus alpha or pi minus gamma, etc., depending on which kind it's tilted, this particular triangle. But no matter what it is, no matter where this H falls, outside on the left or outside on the right, we will always deal with exactly the same type of um, identity, and the only difference is that in case we have pi minus some angle, and we're talking about sine, sines only here, we just replace sine of pi minus some angle to a sine of this angle. So the, the theorem actually is, is, is proven. Well, is it all? Not exactly. <laughs> Look, if A and H coincide, we really don't have a triangle ABH. We have just one line, right? So the case of right triangle we have to really consider separately. So, well, let's do it again. You know, we have to cover all the cases, right? So let's consider this particular line. To be perpendicular, so it's so it's a perpendicular. So it's a right triangle. Is the theorem true in this particular case? Well, um, let's just think about it. In this particular case, C as a catheters of a right triangle is equal to A times sine of gamma. Right? Okay. Now, sine of 90 degree is 1, right? Sine of 90 degree is equal to 1. We know that. Sine of pi over 2 in radians, if you wish. So, from this particular 
equation. C over sine gamma is equal A over, and I will put 1, basically, sine of 90 degree, which is alpha. So as we see, we still have exactly the same equality. And obviously, for B, it, it looks exactly the same. So basically, that's, that's what it is. And um, all I can say that uh, this particular law of signs is really universal for any triangle. Um, there are two important facts here. Well, number one is obviously the law of signs, which looks really beautiful in my, in my particular uh, viewpoint. Uh, from another point, I would like to mention that the proof which we were using heavily dependent on the picture which we draw what kind of triangle. And it's very important to um, basically draw all kinds of relationship between the sides, angles, etc. So we cover all the cases because otherwise the proof would not be really like universal. So these are two points. I would recommend you to go to notes for this particular lecture uh, at, uh, at unisor.com. Um, also, I would strongly suggest to register you as a student and either your parent or a supervisor as, as a supervisor, as a parent or a supervisor, because then you will be, you, you will be able to, uh, to go through exams and your supervisor will really see how you perform, what's your um, results from, from your exams. And then you can you know, get enrolled in, in some other course, etc. So this would be like an educational process rather than just uh, you know, lectures. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.